then we talked about atomic number, atomic mass, and the protons would draw the electron. That was the lecture last time on this chemistry stuff. So what was the atomic number? How do you know what the number is? <laughs> number of protons. Number of protons. Then how, uh, no, yeah. Then how do you figure out atomic mass? The protons and neutrons. And neutrons. neutrons. Exactly. Which valence shell I mean, the valence? The outer shell. The outer shell that's going to be at. And usually, it always wants to be full. So something like helium, because the first shell has two. Shell two and three has eight. And then when I'm going beyond that, because then it gets really confusing because you get these big molecules. Um, so in this case here, we only stay with the second or third outer shell. And if you had six electrons, well then that's going to take two. And that would be like oxygen with the two hydrogen, hence H2O. Okay, because that would have six out there, and you're going to need two hydrogens to make it have eight. And that would be a political bit of bond. Okay? So it says balancing. You want to balance it. That's what it comes down to. That outer shell wants to be happy. Sodium has one out there, chlorine has seven, so sodium is going to give it up. And sodium becomes positive and chlorine becomes more negative. And that's how the molecule holds itself together because opposites attract. Similar charges repel. So it kind of works like a magnet. Now, in this case, they're going to share the electron. This is carbon bonding, which is all covalent. These are your biomolecules, your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fats, and your nucleic acids. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about here, okay? So for some of you, this is just a boring review. And for others, it's like lost in the world of chemistry. Yeah. So dehydration means when I add these two together, I'm going to give up a water molecule. So synthesis means you're binding it. You're putting it together. Lysis means to break it apart. And I did put up those root words on, and they're on the PowerPoints. It says you must the root words are all there for it. So you have no excuse not getting this stuff in your head. And by test one, I know you, you don't, by when you ask me a question about a question. <laughs> if you ask, what does that mean? That means you don't know what this means. So hydrolysis means what? In the presence of water, I'm going to break it down. And the water's <laughs> going to bind those things. The water's going to bind to it and you know, fill up that empty. It's like oxygen is going to take hydrogen. This is going to take the orange group on that. Hydroxy. And it's been broken. Okay? So you're going to make what they call polymers. Polymers are long, long chain molecules. And that's what these things are. You guys have your carbohydrate, a fat, or your protein. They're going to combine and bind and bind like these long molecules. And when they bind themselves, it's a polymer. Model means one. Poly means many. It's all a mean. Okay? So, here's the example of dehydration synthesis. So we get monomer one, monomer two, add together, water's given off as the byproduct, and now we have a nice covalent bond. There's no longer a monomer, it'd be a, di a diamond, which is not a proper term, for, you know, but that's what it would be. Like if these were sugars, they'd be monosaccharides to disaccharides, which we'll see. That's the first ones we talk about. And they're very easy because they're balanced molecules. So if it's an even number, you know it's, it's a, a sugar or a cow. So then if we want to break it, we throw it into water. And that's not the term lysis means to split. Synthesis means to put it together. Protein synthesis. Fat synthesis. We're building it. We're synthesizing it, putting it together. So this is just telling you what's happening, but this is what's going on. Dehydration means we're giving off water. We're breaking the molecule that knock this off. And then they form a nice covalent bond. Covalent bond, especially if they're single bonded, very strong. 
as we come double and triple, they get weak. Which we're going to see. Okay, especially when you fat. So there we go. So an example would be glucose and fructose give me sucrose. So glucose is your sim, that's six, that's five. That's why one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, and six. This thing here is known as a benzene ring. So whenever you take organic chemistry or biochemistry, you're utilizing this thing all the time. Now benzene in its natural form is a very toxic substance. By doing certain things to it, that's what we're doing. This is not toxic glucose, neither is fructose. Okay, that's not. I knew there was, the, yeah, I remember last time there was an error in these PowerPoints because Benson and I picked it up. Yeah, it's wrong. Because you, you can't get the same thing, you know, twice like it's showing. You're doing the same. That lactose is right, and maltose and sucrose. So these are your most common. Lactose found usually in milk. Malt liquors, they use that in. Or Ovaltine had malt. Mm -hmm. Maltose. Sucrose is your normal table sugar. So this should be glucose and glucose, just for your own reference. So let's go back and get these straight again. Okay, so monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide. So glucose forming sucrose would become glycogen, which is a complex starch. Okay, not the thing as a starch. They're all starches, okay? So they're long, complex stocks. So when you take it in this form, the body doesn't break it down this quick. And if you break down the excess to here, a lot of times this then will become a triglyceride and become fat. But when they come in in complex stocks, the body stores it as a starch for breaking it down later on in the, when the body needs it. So take the long distance runner that's gonna run a marathon of 26 miles, the day, the day before they come up with complex carbs. Complex starches like, pasta. you know, with pastas, rice, but the things that are gonna store in the muscle and in the liver as glycogen, then you're gonna break it down. So that's what the body's gonna do, okay? So there you go. So, it's your only your monomer, your monosaccharide, because there's only one. Then these things would bond together, and this is called what when they bond together? Dehydration synthesis, which is giving up water. And if I was to split it and go backwards, that'd be hydrolysis. I broke it down. I lysed it. Okay? And I see this will move again fats, proteins. But then when you get to ATP, it's different. It's phosph phosphorus we're talking about. It's a high energy group. So it's an energy group, so that won't matter. But these are just long chains of many, many molecules. That's all it means, polysaccharide. Okay? Is that making sense? Okay, so it goes C6, H12O6. That's how you know you got carbohydrates, they're balanced. They'll always say C6, H12O6, so I know I'm dealing with a carbohydrate, it's also glucose. It's a balanced molecule. Mm -hmm. It's in the donuts. Protein will throw your amine group in there, it's a DNH group, and have to be active group R on protein. Fats are not balanced. Same makeup, but not balanced. And they'll have double or triple bonds, and which will, which will shift them looking different. And you'll see that, okay? So you're like, okay, what the, what the freak do I need to know? 
Okay, so how do they bind? What's it called? So if I ask you a question, who goes to Google and create sucrose, what did I do? Synthesis, hydrolysis, hydrolysis, you know what I'm saying? So if you ask the question like that, when you have a multiple choice answer would be dehydration synthesis, right? And if I had glycogen and I'm breaking it down to glucose, that would be hydrolysis. What am I doing to this molecule? I'm doing it synthesis. Am I you know, lysing it? Lysis means to cut or break. So if you understand the term, it's not hard to understand this. And what type of bonding is this? Covalent. So biomolecules are very stable because they covalently bond and they're very strong. That's how we're created. Yay. Okay, so mono di poly. One, two, many. That's all that's saying. So there they are. Glucose, fructose, lactose. And by moving the group in different areas, is how it changes. This is a five pound. Okay. So ribose. DNA. RNA. Kind of important sugar. Deoxyribose, there it is. DNA, RNA. That's why they play a important role at the revolution. When we look at the cell. Okay, so these are things you've heard of. No? You've all heard of RNA and DNA. A lot of drugs react with this, especially when you're treating bacteria or viruses. That's kind of how antivirals will work. They'll stop its DNA from replicating. So the virus can't grow. It's not killing it, but if it can't replicate, it's not doing anything. And eventually it'll die. Because now your immune system can catch up with it and wipe it out. Antibiotics can work that way. We can go into there, or we can coat over, the, over that hot capsule it has, and we can break it up, and, and the white blood cells can get it and kill it. So antibiotics have like three different ways of working. Stop replication. You take the DNA or make the, the uh, protein coat that's on the outside. That's how antibiotics would work, one of those three fashions, depending on what the type it is and what it's doing. Okay, so that's how you treat this stuff. So you've got to understand this stuff. So it makes sense to you when you take the pharmaceutical stuff along your way in nursing. You know, you can understand how pharmaceuticals can interfere with pathways that if you have certain conditions, you can't take this certain type of med because it's going to make you worse. Okay, so if you're on erythromycin, uh, you can't take statins. Because they block the pathway of cy cyclic AMP from synthesizing stuff, so stopping the process of forming your the ATP molecule, you have to stop the statins. So, so that you understand how certain drugs will work. Some will interact with the drugs that you're on that you can't take it because it stops that from working. Some will cause tendon lysis. See that as we get into the different connective tissues of what can happen, okay? So this is important to get in the end. Especially this, this is what we talk about. This is what they test all the time in you, no? Testing blood sugars, we're looking at that. So it's constant, diabetes are constantly reading this all day long. When do I hit my insulin, when do I eat? Okay? And that should have been, these two are the same. Just keep that in your mind when it's showing me how big these molecules can be. And they're long chains. Long, so next time you eat pasta, think about that. Gee. Okay, now, look at this. Now we're going to fats. This happens to be triglyceride. Oh, one glycerol molecule with three chains, three tails, three glycerin tails. Oh, so good. 
Try to do some guys. We get three. Try to use three. <laughs> so this is these long fatty acid tails. And you know, so it's just showing you. You deal with water, but every three molecules we put together. So this is an easy way of drawing the molecules. But what are you seeing now is different that you didn't see in the cars? The double bond. You're still seeing this setup, but now you're seeing a double bond. Hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. That was your major difference. So if you see the double bond like that, you know you're not looking at a carbon anymore. I'm looking at a fat. Because they're going to have double bonds and or triple bonds. And you're going to see saturated versus unsaturated. So one of three dehydration system reactions will synthesize my triglyceride. So we're going to have to have three all together. So we're going to do this all done. But and what are these things used for? And then here it is, saturated versus it's unsaturated. See in the long chain as it's going along this one here? The saturated fat has no double or triple bond in its long chain, as the bond of its long chain does. Unsaturated does. And because of this, at body temperature, this one would stay more liquidy, and this would be more gel-like, the saturated fat. So you tell you, eat butter and saturated fats. See, that's butter, that's olive oil. This, so this bond will break, and the molecule will change its shape, and your body can get rid of it and not store it. Where in the other fashion, the body can't get rid of it. Well, now you have so much pros and cover, but it's better for you than margarine. Cardiologists say no, we help you say yeah. What do you believe? We use coconut oil. Huh? We use coconut oil too. We just do it in moderation, then you really don't have to worry about it. And if you use a stick of butter on your piece of bread, well then it's kind of not good. But if you put little tiny piece on there, you're not going to have a heart attack from that. There's this lady on the unit. She has fat seeping out one of her wounds. It looks like cream corn. It's disgusting, corn. isn't it? It is. Well, it looks like cream corn. It's so gross. Liposuction. <laughs> what it is, it's just a narrow trocar, and it goes under, under into the hypodermis and sucks the fat out. And then what they do, now you've liquidized, you've liquid and broke up that fat, so you get, they get to put tight compressions on you and massage it, and the yolk is really gone, it'll seep out. It's gross. For like a couple of weeks after the procedure. Oh, she did. Gone. She got ran over, and all the skin on her legs is gone. <laughs> so when you look at someone, you that, the legs inside would be like this. Yeah. No, I think we got somebody from year four. I remember with last, oh, we sent this last year. year last year, oh, the day after Christmas, I walk into the funeral home and lay it on the table. There's a guy. Oh my God, huge. He just was all top, so it was wide open. And his fat on his belly had to be at least a foot thick on his side. Uh, that's and gross. And I saw this yellow brown like stuff hanging and dripping. And I said, thank Yummy. God I'm not the one working on them. was the two younger ones. There's they're, another they're, they're into that and all excited. And I now seen, I care less. And look. I but seen, I said, well, why don't you be shaving off and make a more trip in this afternoon? Like, you know, There's a guy who's you know, gone. Lincoectomy mm -hmm. and cut all the fat. Yes. But I mean, it, it's just like fat and gooey. Mm -hmm. And when someone's really obese, surgically, that's an issue. Because it's liquidy and gooey that they're in there. And it's hard for them to see and do what they have to do. It looks gross. It, it is gross. So if a normal person has about <laughs> half inch to an inch of fat around their pericardium, which is normal to cushion and protect it, someone with a high fat body content would have oh. like three to four inches around the heart. <clears throat> So I'm um, out just to go in to do the open heart surgery to see what you got to see. And I seen the inside um, of somebody where their pel like half their pelvis is showing. So I saw where the um, femur goes in. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's so cool, but it's really gross. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna work at CNA to see real severe bed sores or injury. Oh, and we got really bad burns. I mean, in this case, as you'll see, that the pelvic bone is sticking right out. Yeah, they had to amputate it all. Well, the infection is so bad now. I mean, come on, it becomes gangrene. 
And gangrenous That's gas right. is toxic, and you can get it can kill you if you inhale it in. So you got to use real true precaution when you're near that person. Yeah. You know, they never I just. That long. I just sent a guy home who Sorry. had his toes chopped off for that. Well, that's what you got to remember. What's the difference between saturated versus unsaturated? Mm -hmm. It's either double or triple bond. I love my four. So I when, see so when, much you know, when the, uh, oh. the And it makes all this and makes it. Drink, mm -hmm. Ask them that question. Well, what does it do to the double or triple bond when you're drinking? I don't know. That's what they're going to say. Yeah. Then why the hell would I buy something and put it in here? And that's how you nail their ass right to the wall. I said that all the time when Shackley was big. <clears throat> they try to come in your office or they try to. I say, okay, explain the biochemistry. When it gets in the cell, what is it doing to the fats? What's it doing? It's particularly versus saturated versus. Unsaturated, and they can't answer it. Yes. Right, when it's single bonded, not here, but here, <laughs> on the exchange, it's single bonded, that's a saturated fat. No, no, no. So unsaturated fat should be double or triple bonded. Yeah. And because of that, you can bend the molecule by doing this, by breaking one of the bonds, because it's easy to break a triple bond down to a double bond. That's what the body will do, or a double bond to a single bond, and it can get rid of it. It will not store in your blood vessels or around your body. The body will get rid of it, <clears throat> okay? So that's the key of the whole polyunsaturated diet, which pretty much is the Mediterranean diet. There's a lot of olive oil and garlic in that. Mediterranean diet would be anything on the Mediterranean. <clears throat> Italian, French, Portuguese, Spanish, Greeks, mm -hmm. they already eat that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sorry. Can you go into the layering as far as in where the breakage is as far as No, no, I'm not going to do that. Why, you want to get that much detail? No, we did the biochem. Oh, biochem will, yeah. but we're not biochem. We stop here. But biochem will go in more detail of where the breakage would be. Yeah, because it's going to vary molecule to molecule. And so if you really want to know it, then you're going to finish it. Why are you sitting here if you're going to finish it? You don't belong here. I know. She just wants to see your face. Why are you hating on her? I'm not hating on her because I, I gave her an exemption out of this to put her right into just AP2 and get her out of here and into her program. And they said no. Because she had me for anatomy and she's had Physiology and now uh, because oh, time yeah. runs out. Yeah. That's stupid. It really is. Well, that's how you make money. Yeah. Yeah. Like an LDN, going back and take these courses, why? It's not going to do crap for you. <laughs> crap for you in the clinical world. You've already had nursing one, like two, and three. Right you just need four and five. <laughs> So make them take three over as a review of, of everything and then put you in four and five. That would make sense. When doctors want to get specialized in new spread, they don't go back to school. They go into a residency and just train with that area of the body. What's called money making, which is too big in education today. This has become a business, not education anymore. We're going to fill the, fill the rooms. Of okay, course. if they learn anything, we're going to fill the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have too many courses, well, we don't care who you put in there to teach it, just fill them. So you can hire adjuncts that have no ability and throw them in there. Back when I first started, you know, you got to have the ability, or they didn't hire you even part time. You went through hard interviews, everything. No more now. They send their resume in on the phone, and you can you do this? Yeah, well, they're in. Then who suffers in the end? Everybody. That's okay. what we're paying for it. That's what you're paying for. And your tuition goes up because you're paying for the promise too indirectly. Seriously. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but enough. What's that got to do with fats? Nothing, but I can make you feel better. <laughs> so again, I just saturated my butter. So it would be an example of butter. Lie. Crisco. Crisco. <laughs> Fat in the, right? She's fat in the can, Frisco. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, by the way, I can't. But, 
you know, I mean, my grandma doesn't cook, but it's very good taste. Like you put a shoe in there, it would taste good. Hell <laughs> yeah, it does. And all, they all died in their 90s. Yeah. It's good. Back in the day. 96. <laughs> smoked Barodis every day, drank four glasses of wine every day, ate everything he wanted. Good genetics. It's gene, gene food. You know, and, and they walked in. You guys, how many of you guys go to the gym? <laughs> Do you drive to the gym? Oh, the gym. <laughs> so if you just walked that distance back and forth, you wouldn't need the gym. I donate to the gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah most In January, February, you're all gone cold, but by April, you're donating. No, not at all. I've been donating to the <laughs> gym for like six months. Yeah, yeah. right. Psh, for real. Fuck that. That was a good thing they had in show. Have more sex, you're good. But the point is they walked everywhere. I mean, if you went to the mall down there, right here, how many would drive down and back? Depends on the weather. Would. It depends on the weather, actually. Yeah, everybody kind of, well, the thing is just to cross that damn road down there, you'd probably get killed. So you don't have to work. But the point is, if you just <laughs> walk there and walk back. Yeah, buddy, we, we got to do a lawsuit. Right? You, you know, so, so what's the I'm point afraid. then? Do you have to, like, see the Peloton commercial? The Peloton. Oh, yeah. You're always going to work out like that's insanity. Your body can't take that kind of workout all the time, day in, day out. You're going to burn it out. That's why Bruce Lee died so young. This doctor that knew him well was talking about him, and he said, he stated, Bruce Lee worked out 22 hours a day, seven days a week to be the best of the best. And he was. I don't think he was still in today's game with the martial arts that he was taking. That he could probably put away the rest of the men. No matter how big or how small he would do it. He was just, as you raised your leg once, he already hit you with three kicks. That's where he was going with three kicks. He could hit you with three kicks before you could but he died young. They said because his body never had the chance for DNA to replicate and heal. Because he didn't sleep. So think about it. You need to put, no. But if you walk maybe two, three miles, about four or five times a week, and just did some core exercise, your body would stay fine. Other countries like South America, they walk everywhere. No cars. They, some have it, but most people walk. They average probably five, six miles a day. They normal the thing. That's my granddad. They go to the market. My granddad, they walk to it, walk back. You go to the corner store, it's like you could throw a stone and hit it, and you get in the car. Huh? But we're all guilty of it. It's the truth. So they're not burning these things off. But we're putting them in. Like a day like yesterday, watching the Super Bowl. No, I worked all day yesterday. So you were lucky. You lost weight yesterday. Yeah, I walked like seven miles yesterday. It was crazy. So there you go. So just remember, you don't need to know what carbon it's on. Is it on five? Is it on... No. I'm not going to do that to you. That's true biochemistry. If you really want to know, then you go to your eye. I think it's biochemistry, 11, 3, 10. It's just a number. So that means it's a junior senior level course. Because the 400 level courses of URI are grad level. And you do take a couple of those before you graduate with your back. Because then in med school, they're 500 to 600 level, then you go into the clinical. So, okay. So, then you do, okay. What is this good for? Oh. Pull the head, not pull the ta tails. Well, we're showing you the membrane of a cell. That's what we're building up to. That's why fats are so important. And the body would much rather burn a fat than a top. You get like a piece out of a fat molecule. All I get out of a cob is like 32 ATP. My neck. But why do we burn carbs? It's the most abundant molecule in the world. Almost everything you stick in your mouth has carbohydrates. Mm. And if it tastes really good, then it has both carbs and fats. If it tastes yucky, then it's good for you. If it tastes like that piece of paper, then eat it. So I live it six months longer.
in the end. So instead of dying at 85, I die 85 and a half, big deal. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Do you have to deprive yourself? No, <coughs> just do it smart. If you eat two donuts a day, cut to one. They're finally cut to every other day. And you'd see your weight loss. You just don't throw it right out and you go, oh, we're gone. Because what's going to happen in about six to seven weeks, you're going to crave it. And then you're going to binge it. Me too. You need a half a dozen at one time. So just think about that. The body will crave it. So why do we want some parts to be hydrophilic and some to be hydrophobic? So fats would be hydro water like you don't want to eat. Right? The hydrophobic and the hydrophilic are the tails, which are the non fats, which is more of the carbohydrate. So, by building the membrane that way, it can let things pass through when they have to, like shifting themselves. So, when we get into this, you're going to learn about something for your device. Notice that the phosphate is not But these are phospholipids. They're phospholipids. See, these are the basic triglycerides. This is not we add a phosphate, because we make a phospholipids. We phosphate. So it's phosphorylation, we added a phosphate, okay? So phospholipids. So we add, so there's different types. Look at the secret of the Like six sides. This is going to be for cell membrane. We add a phosphate to it, make it a phospholipid. And what's also missing, which would be a trait, it would also be 10% cholesterol in there too, which would be shown. But we'll get to that when we get to this cell. So now we, so the drawing looks just like this. The food tables and pull ahead. So when you learn about this membrane, it's going to be called the mosaic model of the membrane theory. What do you mean by a mosaic model? What's, the, what's mosaic mean when you look at a mosaic picture? As a bunch of small pieces are put together, it makes a big picture. But if we get up close, it's a miniature mosaic. So in other words, the membrane, I'm trying to understand that separates separate your cell from the outside world. It's a little desktop. Not, it's semi-permeable to only what it wants to go in or throw out. So it's going to give it an isolation on itself. And because it's made of fat, it can do that. If it was made just of carbohydrates, the world would go through it. Okay, so that's why it's designed this way. It means it's got fat, it will pull the watery stuff inside the way it should. So it's showing you these things are kind of important, correct? Triglycerides, major form of stored energy in the body, fat deposits to insulate your organ. Then we go phospholipids, chief component of cell membranes help transform lipids in the blood, like lipoproteins. So this table summarizes for you what they do. So what did I do to change it from this to this? I added a phosphate. I phosphorylated it. Okay, then we have cholesterol, which is bad, right? That's bad, bad. Component of cell membrane, starting molecule for synthesis of all body steroids. Well, that kind of sounds, sounds important. Does that sound important to you? <laughs> Bio salts break it down. Which comes from your liver, the bile, and your gut. Right? Vitamin D, fat soluble vitamin produced in the skin on exposure to UV radiation. Necessary for more, and not just bone growth and function, immune function in the body needs vitamin D3. That's probably one of the best things you can pop in yourself in this time of year is you're not getting any sunlight. So your vitamin, you, you all so become so deficient in D3 this time of year. <laughs> My deficiency is so bad. So if you, Top 5,000 units a day, it would help your immune system also. But this functions a much big part of cell function. Sex hormones, 
estrogen and progesterone, the female hormone and testosterone, they're all bases of fat. Okay, then corticosteroid. Cortisol is metabolite hormone that's remaining normal body glucose levels. And we'll talk about when you stress and make this high. Aldosterone helps regulate salt and water balance by tithing in the kidneys. So what we're gonna, you'll learn next time is that aldosterone is the hormone that reabsorbs sodium in the angio intestine one and two system. So they do use ACE inhibitors to block that in, when they're treating blood pressure. ACE inhibitors will come in and block this hormone, aldosterone. Okay? So that's important. So it kind of looks important fast, doesn't it? But you shouldn't eat them. I'm on a fat-free diet <clears throat> and a carb-free diet. I'm getting skinny and I'm getting stupid by the day goes by. <laughs> What's the brain burn? Carbs. Carbohydrates. The brain burns a lot of carbohydrates. The brain's a high-energy product. It doesn't stop working. Even when you're sleeping, it still works. And it burns carbohydrates. So you, why do you think you get like a fog when you when you low your blood sugar is low? No carbs. Affects the brain. Okay. You just think about this stuff before you do the chemists. Very important. Why don't you just start eating more vegetables and, and fruits and increase your water intake? And the body will cleanse itself. Because that's what the liver does. It's a detoxifying organ. So you don't detoxify, detoxify. You know, because it will do it itself. So if, if you're drinking alcohol every day, stop doing that. Give the liver a rest. People will ask you someday, come to nurses, you're going to get asked a lot of crap, especially when they can get the information for free. They're going to ask you. Family members will call you. It's like, how do I know? I didn't see any of the reasons. I didn't see any of the tests. I don't know what's going on. Everything's a could be. You can't make a determination without seeing lab results and MRIs, and you can't. You just get, you know, they're just educated guests, and you don't want to do that if you never saw the person. And you got no records in front of you. And everything's a secret. So you have fat side A, D, E, K. So you, you get that from eating special K, right? Yes. That was my breakfast yesterday. That's K. <laughs> For the people who haven't had this before, what's K? Anybody ever heard of vitamin K? Why would they give it to you? No ideas? It's synthesized in our large intestine by bacteria, E. coli. E. coli forms that in the large intestine, vitamin K. It's important for blood clotting. Vitamin E helps, you know, membrane healing and all that stuff. And it's also important for the metabolism of fats. And then you get E, which is good for division and making tissue more resistant. The D for the bones and cell synthesis. So they all have an important role in our body. But they're all toxic in heavy doses. But it's a vitamin. So the question is, can vitamins become toxic and yes. poisonous? And the answer is yes. So I want you to see all of this stuff at the same time, as you're getting some nutrition information at the same time. Prostaglandins derived from fatty acids found in the cell membrane. Lipoprotein. In other words, protein and lipid hook together. And that's important for transporting fatty acids, cholesterol, in the bloodstream. And the one we want is HDL, high density lipoproteins, not low density, the LDL. And then you have low density. Then you have VLDL, very low density, which means they're very thick, globby molecules. Basically, you might as well just So the idea of a statin is it kind of breaks that from forming, but it doesn't do anything to make this become more. 
but to make increase this is olive oils and things like that. Because they're, they're rich in that. You know, glycolipids, components of the cell membrane, which makes sense. So carbohydrates attached to lipids, and the, you know, determine blood type, play a role in cell recognition, in, in recognizing foreign substances in the immune system. So you can see fats are very important in our everyday lives to keep our body functioning. If you put the right ones in. So using vegetables, uh, using polyunsaturated fats, and the meats are more saturated fats. Especially red meats. So that's the controversial thing. What should I eat? Uh, not eat it at all. That's up to you. <sighs> so there's a cholesterol. I'll show you a cholesterol problem. Now we're going to the last one because it has an amine group. It must be a protein. And it is. Because it has the NH group. And the smell you smell when protein breaks down is more than I am, because an H2 brings an H3 to get released. And that's why fish stinks, your body stinks, why it's decaying, because you're smelling that. It's a nasty smell. And the reactive group here will tell you what kind of amino acid I'm going to be and what type of proteins we're going to make. So they all have this different argument. And there's 20 essential amino acids in the body that we need. And over half of them you can't get without dietary sauce. You can't make them. You can't, you know, synthesize that. That's going to be coming into us to, to, as an amine group for what I'm going to do with it. Alanine, phenylalanine, ironine. These things are all amine, amino, amino acids. They're amine groups. When they hook together, they create proteins. You know, so you have to go and you can learn all this 20th century. Why? Why do I need to learn something? I can look on a chart and it's there. I agree with you. There's no the existence. That's just 20. Essential. And there's a ton of others that are not essential, but the body can replicate them. So, what is it used for? We have structural proteins for college information, right? We have enzymes. Oh, this is an enzyme lab, right? Transport proteins, such as your friend the hemoglobin. Contractile proteins, which we'll learn when we get here. Mm -hmm. Communication proteins, and defense proteins. Oh, wait, I like that right To there. attack viruses. Like your friend the coronavirus. They think somebody in Rhode Island Hospital they has it. Yeah, they're on the fourth floor. They've got a better chance of dying prone. The, the normal food going around right now is the normal food. I don't think it's a SARS one, though. No. And that's the truth. SARS one. It's just a scan tactic to sell news. Do you understand about another six weeks? You won't even hear about it anymore. How about Ebola? Ebola is a thousand times more deadly than that. <laughs> Did it spread through the United States? No. They've quarantined it off already. Right? I don't know who's doing that. They're yeah. taking their precautions. It's not going to spread. The healthcare workers aren't going to get it because they're not stupid. They was on, they was on my floor, and then they went down to respiratory. Yeah. But you follow what I'm saying, so don't panic yourselves. I Unless you, it. you know, have a friend that just came right there and they're living with you, then maybe you get a chance. <laughs> so like, get out. Now we're the students. So structural. But that's an important one. Yes, it is. Has four oxygen molecules. It binds the four ions, yes. Okay. And then this guy, active myosin, they're important because without that, your muscles don't contract, your heart doesn't beat, smooth muscles don't work either. You so it kind of must be important. Communications, you know, I'm not going to talk about that, I'm not going to talk about those. Okay. So, same type setup, just like the other two dehydration synthesis and hydrolysis, the break for peptide. So they're known as peptide bonds. So another name for a protein is <laughs> many, 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 many peptide bonds. So when this nitrogen and carbon unite, that's a peptide bond. 
And, they, and they're so sensitive to temperature and pH. Very sensitive to temperature and pH. They fall apart easily. So that means enzymes are very sensitive to temperature and pH. Because the majority of enzymes are proteins. And that's why you did these experiments in the lab playing with pH and pH and enzymes. And another thing, if you didn't want to see the, uh, the catalase work, then all you want to have to do is add about three or four eye droppers full of hydrochloric acid to your peroxide and throw the liver in there. It and nothing would have happened. Or heated it up beyond room temperature or body temperature and nothing would have happened. They would have broken it down. It doesn't work. The catalase gets destroyed. So there you go. So it wouldn't have happened. So polypeptide. And again, the same thing. This and this. So I take it out. I synthesize it. I lyse it to break it. I give off. I dehydrate it to create it. That's just got to keep it in mind. And then you got primary, secondary, tertiary, quarter memory, which this is a four type. This is three, two. So that looks familiar. Doesn't that look familiar? Double helix? No. Doesn't look familiar to me. Maybe it was early 1950, but by now it's sure. Right? What's in the print model? Primary structure. See, these are some of your masses hooked together. They become friends. What if they don't so this comes in four shapes. And they come up. So what does an enzyme do when it gets in? Look what it lowers the activation. It lowers the activation energy. It lowers it. So it happens quicker. That's how it works. So it's a catalyst. Catalysts and enzymes are the same thing. See, if you react it, the enzyme goes in there, here, it goes out. happens quicker. I need less energy to make it happen. That's how we use them. The body uses them all the time. We need them. The chemical reactions, these complex reactions in our body wouldn't be going on. So over this point, we just talked about three big molecules. Carbs, fats, and the main that provides two key fats was triglycerides, which you store, and phospholipids, which make cell membranes. And the key molecule that binds them in there is cholesterol in those phospholipids. It's telling you that. Then we went to proteins, which are polypeptides, because they have a, there's a mean group, which is an NH group. That's how you know. If I got CHO not even numbered, and I have a double or triple bond there, holding a double bond there and not a couple on the chain, then I have to be a fat. But if I'm an evenly balanced carb CHO, then I'm probably a carb. So you can recognize them. Well, I make you look at isomers and recognize them in uh, biochemistry. But just know that. Because someday you may decide you want to be a nurse practitioner, and you're going to have to take biochemistry. Some bachelors require that. Not all. Some do. Okay? So I know chemistry is going to be required if you want to be a SN. There's not much nursing difference between the ASN and the BSN, community nursing. <laughs> but as far as on the clinical side, there's no difference between you and the BSN. ASNs and BSN have the same knowledge. So just keep that in the back of your head. But just know, understand, it lowers the activation energy. That's how it works. That's how enzymes work, okay? And it's showing you, it has active sites that will grab these two things and then notice in the end, the enzyme released and it created this peptide bond. I'm not needed at the end. So the point is, they're like inactivated. They stop the trouble, but then leave. I 
get the food, you stop banging it out, I walk away. Let me go. Go on right. Well, she said, this is mine. You take that one here, I would smack it right in the head. Bang, you smack it in the head. There it goes. I walk away now. I'm an enzyme. Bye. <laughs> and they're, they're beating one another up. Think of it as a troublemaker. That's the easy way to remember it. But am I involved in the fight? No. <laughs> I don't know, officer. They started. Oh, no, I'm involved. They, they just started swinging around that. You get my point? That's an enzyme. So this is why certain enzymes should not raise the blood, because that means there's an issue. The tissue is dying, and they're being released out in the blood. So that's how they trace enzymes in the bloodstream. OK? So then you do. So now we're going to go DNA. So if we're going into this, that means we're going to go into nucleic acids. So we have DNA versus RNA. And that only has two ribos. So now it's called deoxyribonucleic acid versus ribonucleic acid. So how do we make proteins? It goes DNA to RNA to protein synthesis. That's how we make it. It goes DNA, RNA, protein. So the RNA is we, we split the molecule. And if we're going to make another DNA, then it would hook up with something else. But if we're going to make proteins, then no. We're going to just have RNA. And they're going to travel down and create proteins. That's their job. So we'll get into this into the cell. But here we go. So the major, and notice this one that um, these are the reactive groups that bind. A, G, C, T, right? Adenine, guanine, cysteine, cytosine, thiamine. And when we get here, Yervisor replaces thiamine in RNA. So you won't see this. So these things are known as codons. Codons, C O D O N S, codons. And the one that binds with it would be anti codon, the one that's going to hook to it. Correct? Because A goes with T, G goes with C. Anybody remember that? You must remember that from Biochem. And that's how they talk to one another, the sequence. So how do we make a screw up? Well, when this one should have gone with this and it didn't, we made a mess. The sequence went out of order, and that out of order sequence. So when you, when, you buy, when you have three of these in succession, each one makes an amine group, and they build one another. And so that's how we make protein. We're showing the protein synthesis. That's all this is showing. And there it is. Ah. So this one has a diamine that has an anime, so they will they'll hook together. C goes with G, A goes with T, so in a, in when you're using DNA, RNA, what would happen? Well, this one goes away, so A would go with U. A goes with U. Okay? So remember, A go, like at. A and T go together, C and G go together. If we're talking DNA. If we're talking RNA, C and G still go together. But there's no more T, it becomes uracil, U. So A would go with U. Okay? To make my protein. So here we're replicating DNA versus RNA. And it's just showing you what's happening. Here's where you bond them. So these bonds can break. Because again, the type of bonding only school beta. Only school beta. Only school beta. And that's not in the ion. Or the electrolyte. Electrolyte and ion are the same thing. That means I have a charge. Okay? You won't. Who'd be that nuclear? So again, we're still talking about, because I see this, we're still talking about DNA. So, monomers. So, now it's starting to summarize. So carbohydrates, monosaccharides, polysaccharides, proteins, amino acids, polypeptides, of protein, nucleic acids, nucleotides, DNA, or RNA. Now, the what are we doing different here now? What are we adding to this nucleotide? ATP. See it? 
we're going to move up. We stop with, and then this means that we have one phosphate, with two with diphosphate, and we try to really stay strong in this, okay? So we do phosphorylation. Phosphorylation means adding and throwing a phosphorus group. And when you use phosphorus, that's a high, high energy product. Very high energy phosphorus. You're gonna see this all the time when we talk about nerve function, muscle function, in the presence of ATP, the contraction will happen. Without it, it don't happen. So, we'll run over and get the muscle. This is the definition of rigor mortis. When the last ATP molecule forms in the body, rigor sets in. Because after you die, that process still keeps going on for hours later. The body part of you is kind of still alive, metabolizing, even though the brain is dead. And that can go on for another six to eight hours, depending on how long it takes you to use all this up. Because why are we going to get used up when we have no more oxygen coming into the picture to help it? So now we're getting into the, the energy side. That side was, the, you know, this was the genetic side, this here, and protein side. This is the energy side. So when you look at nucleotides, ATP goes with that belongs in that family. And the same thing, but this time we're phosphorylating it. So we're gonna break it apart, you throw it in water. I wanna unite them together. Heat, so when I create, when I burn off energy to create energy, there you go. And always my dry pot is gonna be as water. Sweat. So look what it's needed for to, to move, to transport things. For muscle contraction, chemical work. So we, we mainly just focus this. What would chemical work, that would be with a, with a nerve. So. chemical work, muscle contraction, transporting stuff. So if I'm transporting something, then I'm going against a concentration gradient, I need energy to do that. And we'll learn about a thing called active transport. We learn a lot of fun. Is that what today is? Huh? Is that what today is, lab? And yes, today's lab is Told you. kind of that stuff. <laughs> But now you have some understanding of what you're going to be doing in there today. Oh, the same thing. Tomorrow, same boring stuff. And that kind of finishes off chemistry. So this stuff is just really which you know, what's that going to make? Is it gas acid? What's that? Methane gas, right? What's that? Agrocarbo trichloride, right? which is a deadly substance. That's like humans they use, not just your nitrogen and gas. All right, so that finishes like the off. Cleaner, so eat You're use. not going to get asked this stuff on your test, so don't worry about that. The main thing to know is what is a nucleotide? It's either going to be DNA, RNA, or, or your ATP. You have a test suit? Or your ATP. You have a test suit, right? Oh, I think so.